So here we are. We are with Edwin Cohen, broadcast master. Hey, hey hello, Edwin. This is uh, welcome to the Voices of Change show. I you know, am really uh, happy to be on change. your show. I'm really happy to be on your show and and merci beaucoup for this opportunity. Avec grand plaisir. Et bonjour, <laughs> parce que chez toi c'est le matin et chez moi c'est le soir. <laughs> Well, uh, we're going to have a good time. So uh, yes. allow me to uh, introduce myself real brief. Of course. And then, then we could talk about reinvention if you want. And uh, I apologize for the glare here. I'm trying to adjust my lighting. <laughs> okay. So. Uh, But you look great. Oh, uh, you're happy. Good. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So uh, uh, I am going to. Uh, introduce myself and for your audience and i welcome people to uh, contact me to uh, discuss uh, my direct uh, email is publisher at globalbusiness.media and that'll come right to me worldwide okay because let let, let let's just tell uh, our listeners um that you are one of the most famous broadcaster on earth Uh, no. Uh, anyway, I am. Uh, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, so uh, briefly, um, je m'appelle Ed Cohen, and uh, I'm the broadcaster of Global TV Talk Show, which is a business unit of globalbusinessnews.net, uh, based in California. And so my job is to bring together business people from across borders from across time and cultures to come together in a, a global teleconference. I call it global TV talk show. Why? To meet, be introduced, exchange ideas, talk things through about a common topic or just shooting the breeze. My job is to bring people together in this pandemic era, uh, which is thankfully evolving, But Zoom will per persist, <laughs> and this medium is terrific if you use it correctly. So we want to help business people meet and build rapport that could last a lifetime if they're lucky. I am Global TV Talk Show. Yes, that's great. That's a great seven-second pitch. Hey, hey you progress. <laughs> you you are working progress. <laughs> so I was reading it here, uh, and that, that's yes. why I had this, this well, light. Well, this is being here. recorded, right? <laughs> yeah, well, you're you're the recorder. No, but and it's going to go but, live. So tell us, Ed, how do you make a change? I mean, and how how do you people who you invite on your broadcast show make a change? So here's the secret sauce is to be authentic. And you just saw authenticity, me adjusting my chair and moving around and, you know, without these, I can't really see clearly. So, and, <laughs> and I don't want to. So anyway, uh, what uh, I used to do, I mean, for years. Uh, so anyway, when I was a kid, I started out at 15 or so working part-time being a salesman. Um, But as a kid, you know, because we were appealing to boomers who were all about the same age. Um, and so I was retained uh, by an advertising agency to uh, sell stuff on TV uh, in the early days. All right. And so I did it for a while and then I didn't want to do it anymore. I don't know why, but wrong connections, wrong people. But I like the idea of being in front of the camera and. The idea is just to be yourself and not put on any phony ears. Sure, there could be a script, but it's what you do with it and how you explain yourself, whether it's a, an idea or a place to go or a of restaurant course. to visit of course. Of or course. a product to use. Well, tell so, us, Ed, tell us, who was the little Ed? I want to know more about you when you were a kid. I stuttered. And uh, I, <laughs> so this is part of my therapy <laughs> of reinvention. So um, I, I don't know, I couldn't 
get P and R's together or whatever. And so it, okay. it was a mess. And, you know, all the girls laughed at me in school. And so I was afraid to raise my hand. And um, so finally, I got some counseling in school. Uh, they pulled me out of uh, some classes and gave me uh, a closed room session with a shrink. Uh, okay. actually, he, he, actually, he was the football coach okay, in high school. Right. And I don't play football. I was a track guy. Okay. I ran track. Okay. But so he says, what's going on? How come you're stuttering? How, how come you can't <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Yeah? And, and so <laughs> can you stop making that noise with your pen? <laughs> oh, no, it's my nervous thing. I'm nervous. I'm, all right, I'll, you're I'll not, you're not used to being on a, on a podcast, yeah, because you podcast <laughs> people yourself. Hey, hey, hey. I know, I put them at, uh, on the point. That's so, right. And so, yeah. so when did this start at all? I mean, you, you, were, you were a nice kid, very, very curious, very lively. Yeah, so anyway, um, this was like I was um, 14, okay? Going, and I had some acne. And, oh God! So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so anyway, this big, big burly guy, you know, with a crew cut and shoulders out to there, you know. And okay. here I am, this little puny, skinny guy, you know. And so, so he says, "So, do you like sports?" And and I said, "Yeah, I like sports." So he says, "How come you didn't stutter just then?" <laughs> Jeez, I don't know. I'm comfortable with you. I don't. I, I, you're not asking me to say words that have double consonants or something. I don't know. <laughs> so he says, "Okay, here's the sports page," and this was in the Boston area. Mm -hmm. So the Boston Globe was a big newspaper. He says, "Okay, here's the Red Sox. They're playing ball. Read the story to me, and just take your time, and try not to stutter." And so. I started reading, uh, so Ted Williams hit a home run and some other guy was pitching and you know, some other guy on the team stole a base and created a, a run producing scenario, okay? And he says, how come you didn't stutter? I said, geez, I don't know. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to sit there and take five minutes and just continue reading that news story to yourself and don't speak. And I'll be right back. I'm going down the hall and I'll never forget this. So he came back in and he says, <clears throat> excuse me, don't read what you just read, but just tell me, what did you just read? Uh, yeah, that's that, great. This is exactly the same type of advice that I give when I coach people in public speaking. I tell them, don't write your speech, just speak it. You know, just point out the, the main issues from heart from, that you from, have from, yeah. from your heart and then speak your speech. Because if you write it, getting from writing to, to speaking is nonsense. So you, you are a brilliant speaker. Yeah, so you know what? Um, I, until recently, uh, I shied away from being in front of the camera because it's been years. But you know what? Let me back up and tell you the, the real story here and I'll be real brief. Um, our first live business conference where we brought together some of my advertisers with some of my users, both customers. So I was at the time publishing California bound professional relocation guides, which is a glossy magazine of about 150, 200 pages, uh, full of information about where to live in greater LA. And so the guide, and with color pictures and, uh, and lots of facts and figures about real estate prices and school systems and commuting and some other pages about sports teams and the beach and surfing and whatever. So it was a, a big hit. It was designed to be a recruitment guide uh, by company personnel managers trying to re recruit uh, and build up employment teams, mm -hmm. particularly in aerospace, particularly in defense work, and of course in consumer because it's California lifestyle, the beach, you know, outside living, 
24 <laughs> 7 mm. all year okay and so the only trouble at that time which was i'm dating myself now going back to uh early 1980s um the interest rates in the u.s for mortgages were like 18 19 percent which was crazy right and nobody could afford to buy a house yeah it was the same in france except those people who were being recruited by large companies who had big bucks and they wanted talent computer scientists artists salespeople, technical people engineers to work in industry in la greater la southern california which is of course a huge area and mm. so they would help people buy a house guaranteed recruitment bonus all right by okay. helping them qualify and guaranteeing as long as they stayed employed that there'll be money there to pay the mortgage That's and great. then they did that and so we wrote that up in story type put it in this magazine because internet didn't exist uh, legally at that time uh we'll talk about that in a minute but um it was all print paper and if you could record it you know on a tape recorder and then play a speech yeah you could do that uh, but the combination of that the way multimedia is structured today it didn't exist then except in hollywood and that's where i was all right in la so i partnered up with amongst other people the los angeles chamber of commerce with downtown and everybody wore a tie you know so i did too and so uh they had me come and talk to their board uh because they really liked the idea of this california bound guidebook uh, as a pr device right and mm -hmm. I didn't know much about relocation business, but I knew a lot about PR and advertising and how to build a concept and get it in front of people. And of course, by this time I had conquered the stuttering thing. So I wasn't afraid to speak, uh, but I, I carefully did not use PR in, in other words. <laughs> so um, Chamber of Commerce became a partner to me. They bought uh, thousands thousands of these guidebooks at uh four bucks four dollars a piece that's I mean, a great bought, success story they 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 bought during the 80s uh probably a half a million okay wow. at, that, at that price and then they sold them at 10 bucks and they kept all the money i didn't care you know and then i got yeah, well, all this i got all this everyone was, it was a win-win deal right yeah. So then I had advertisers and it was mostly real estate advertiser in some banks, but the users, the customers were Boeing and Northrop Grumman and IBM and aerospace companies and engineering companies, in addition to Paramount Pictures and 20th Century Fox, mm. which which were less than a mile away from where I lived, okay? And um, so they became customers also. And they really liked the whole idea of newcomer guides. And you know who else liked that idea? Um, the uh, governor of California through the Economic Development Organization okay. about attracting business. I was really making a change for people then, because at that time, uh, all those things were not really existing. I mean, you were probably one of the first who were doing this. Yeah, but I wasn't smart enough to build it up uh, right away. And so I kept it going and tried to perfect it rather than branch out. Uh, eventually, I formed US Bound. And under that was New York Bound, Florida Bound, Texas Bound, Chicago Bound, uh, California Bound, and you know uh and they would and I, I had a really hard time franchising and and then i went to uh hiring people and and then i hit a wall <laughs> because i don't know anything about all that and people yeah, thought well, i was thought and so i was crazy you, did you have a did your company break or did you have a 
No, but a marriage broke at that time. Oh, <laughs> and, <laughs> that's another and, story. <laughs> no, it, it became the story and it cost me a lot. So, uh, so, uh, I re uh, so I kept doing it, but I changed the nature of it and I expanded our conference business. Our very first conference was in 1984, live conference, bringing people together to meet exchange ideas within a business setting. Now that concept is not new, but apply to this industry, this relocation mm -hmm. recruit, recruitment function, the guidebook was the star and all the people that I did business with or who used the guide came together in the basement lunchroom <laughs> at the LA Chamber of Commerce. Not fancy, let me tell you. It was like a cafeteria and and then I had speakers from Apple Computer and Paramount Pictures and Bank of America, as well as some lesser names uh, about how they used it and why it worked and, and blah, 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 right? And then I had sponsors who are my advertisers have a little table and they all got introduced and I all let, I let them all speak a little bit. So this and is still was, what you, you're doing right now, eh? Until until March 1st, 2020, when COVID struck and shut everything down here. Yeah. And, and then- Well, because I, 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 I remember ourselves organizing conferences all over the place. I mean, you know, you were, you were organizing one or two or three conferences in Paris. I spoke also in Zurich for you, I remember. And, yeah. uh, and, and since the COVID, what have you been doing? What, how did you make a change then? Well, we were forced almost into bankruptcy because all the money stopped coming um, because we made money building conferences, sponsors, ticket sales. We of had course. some, we had ongoing side business of advertising, um, but we never paid attention to that. So our very last meetings were uh, on February 25 in New York City in Times Square inside the accounting offices of uh, a tax firm called RSM and we, we had like a hundred people in their meeting room overlooking Times Square. It was a wonderful environment. And, uh, and that uh, was followed by two days later, uh, Washington DC, uh, February 27, which proved to be the very last live meeting I was able to produce because of the pandemic. Uh, and that was in Washington DC on Embassy Row, which is a very uh, fancy area uh, where embassies are from around the world. And it's also a neighborhood uh, where Embassy Road is. It's a neighborhood where uh, Obama now lives. Okay. Uh, and also down the street from where Obama uh, was living, uh, still is, were uh, Ivanka Trump and Jared and their family. And so just to give you an idea of the nature of the area, tight security everywhere. So our meeting uh, was set up to happen previous to all this uh, by a friend of mine who was the manager, the curator of this mansion on Embassy Row uh, that was uh, the historic home of President Woodrow Wilson, who uh, was US president, guess what? during the 1918-20 pandemic of flu uh, and uh, right after World War I. And he was instrumental in helping set up the League of Nations with some others, of course. And uh, so it was held, the meeting was held in his uh, parlor, <laughs> which was very elegant and nice place. So at that meeting, we had uh, a couple of people from embassies, but more so corporate and some NGOs and a bunch of services experts. And uh, it was quite elegant. And, uh, you know, the room was filled. But after that meeting on February 27, I flew back to California on a, on a late flight out of Reagan National Airport. And other than the flight crew, it was me and three or four other people on the plane. The whole plane was empty, and which is very unusual. 
And so I knew that something bad was coming. And sure enough, two, three days later, everything shut down. And there went our business. And so the question became, <laughs> now what? And so it was- and So how did the, you reinvent yourself? It was back to the future. So I had been complaining to some people uh, who I talk with a lot now. Uh, about how tired I was and how how much money it costs to fly around and stay in hotels and produce these events, even though there was some profit in it. And there was like the, in the Washington meeting, which was wonderful, there was no Zoom. There was no people other than who was in that room, 50 people. Right? Now it was the right people, so it was nice to be there. But well, it's better to have the quality than the quantity, right? But wouldn't it be great to have you speak to our group by big screen TV? So I thought, this is a no-brainer. It's a teleconference. That's been around forever. You know, all you got to do is we'll turn on TV and look at the news. They have interviews with people from around the world talking with the guy in New York, right, by screen. And so that's what we're going to do. And so Paul, producer Paul and I uh, put our heads together. Now I had known Paul since 2010, just about the time you and I met, but uh, he uh, was at the time a chief engineer for World Talk Radio, which was uh, the forerunner, one of the inventors uh, of commercializing the internet for, uh, they call it podcasts. It's a radio show, right? Talk show. Only you got the world, not just WKRP, you know, in Cincinnati. So uh, he says, come, let's do shows. You've got a good voice and you've got a good market. And so we started doing radio shows, podcasts, interviews, just by internet, right? Yeah, but and just, so how, just how do you do? How do you just do to audio. monetize this? Because this is what our listeners are really interested in, is how do you monetize your shows and how you get money out of them? Well, you can ask for some people to pay you for the PR, and, but most aren't going to have the money or the interest to pay me. They want the PR. So yeah, you can get a little bit of money out of it. But the big money is in a network of several shows top quality with good people and good info exchange and not boring and you find sponsors and give them space and introduce the sponsors and the advertisement is a banner link and you put it right on their program and you put it on a web page that i build uh, to support each of the broadcasts and so people can go and read up about, you know, and other things and other links are on the webpage. And there's the click to the podcast radio show. So our theme song on the global radio talk show.com going back to 2010 has been Louis Armstrong and what a wonderful world it could be. And so every time you go to that, globalradiotalkshow.com, even today, you're going to hear that song. That's and great. so, okay, so then we said, it's a no brainer, we've got to get comfortable looking at this green light up here, and, and being camera ready. So uh, you camera ready? Yeah, you look, you're, the, <laughs> you're the red tornado wearing that. And, and without, you know, with all your with all your energy. And so we decided that, okay, I've got all these contacts who would never travel to one of my conferences in the US or in London or even Paris, unless they were very close. And even then. So here's a way to bring together people from across borders, across cultures, across time, but everybody's sort of connected at the time to this business of talent management across borders and to, to discuss policies and practices and to make new introductions. And so at that time, 
and up until recently, that were that was a hundred percent focus on our TV broadcast, which we call Global TV Talk Show. Right? What else? It's not a webinar. I hate webinars. It's so boring. Um, <laughs> yet some people do it, and they even they can. For it. They can be boring, but some webinars can be really interesting. I mean, just wait until you attend one of my webinars. <laughs> Well, we're going to hear from you in just a second when I stop talking. And notice I haven't really started. So, <laughs> well, we have to end the, the talk in a couple of minutes. So you better be quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I want you to tell the audience the science behind the seven second pitch, uh, sort of what I stumbled over in the beginning. Uh, but you're the professional. So I'm going to throw this back to you, Christine Morlay, like <laughs> Chevrolet. And uh, yeah, well, what, what is the science behind that? The, the science behind the seven second pitch, uh, Ed, is very, very simple. It has to have first name, last name and function if necessary. And then I help target group or target people, group of people who suffer from this, who have issues about this or that, get benefit, I am brand. That's so easy. So I am uh, Christine Morlet, uh, speech coach <laughs> like Chevrolet. <laughs> I help entrepreneurs who struggle with the, the, the structure of their keynotes or who don't know what to do with their hands when they speak. I help them become memorable I am the positive influence specialist. That's my seven second pitch, you see? So it's always the same. You have first name, last name function. I help target group who have issues or problems, get benefit, I am brand. That's what it's all about. And uh, this can go around the world. I mean, it's, 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 it's great. It's a great way to introduce yourself if you don't have so much time <laughs> to do it. But actually, so, this this talk show was about you. So um, before but we, but I am nothing without you, Chris. Oh come on, yeah, that's so kind of you. <laughs> but you know, um, before we we end up this um, Voices of Change show because this is my uh, show, uh, I would like you to tell us one uh, really nice trick uh, that people can then reproduce if they want to launch their show. Their own show. Yeah. So first of all, they have to be comfortable in front of the camera and, and respect it and actually make love to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Because it will love you. It's true. Yes, it's true. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And, 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 and be comfortable in front of a camera is not such an easy thing. I'm sure that you've, you've had some hosts uh, who, who have, have been really struggling with that. Yeah, it's bad. And, you know, some people think that it's cool to uh, wear, wear a hat, you know, <laughs> and, or, or, even, or have little teddy bear like mine. Or, you know, like, like that. <laughs> Well, this is going to go it's, on YouTube not, as well. It's not cool. It's not cool. You know, it's going to be it's going to go on YouTube as well. So it's going to be well broadcast. I use Anchor as a yeah. uh, you know uh, tool, but yeah. <laughs> what, so, what's that? A giraffe? Yeah, that's a giraffe, and this yeah. is a cup, right? All right, uh -huh. and this is a, you know coffee, and because it's, it's like eight eight forty one in the morning here. Yeah, in, in California. So I took that picture at the Honolulu Zoo uh, a couple of years ago when Joanne and I were there. And so it's, it's a great picture. And so what it shows is striving. You know, the giraffe is striving to get that, that food up top there and the tree, right? And so what you need is, if you're going to do TV, you need a visual like that, okay? Or like your red scarf. Or yes. like... 
this you need picture to there. strive and roar in yeah, front of yeah. the camera. And you so need you to, see that? I, I, I say it again, you need to make love to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, being in, in France, you know, it's not a problem. But uh, maybe, uh, maybe somebody from Germany or Japan wouldn't be comfortable doing that. But <laughs> I well, think that, wait, well, I, you know, it's a, it's a I, different I, culture. You, we, we're getting yeah. people from different cultures and, and different <laughs> different people, different groups. Well, anyway, uh, it's been a it's been a, a chance, an honor again to talk to and, you to have you on my show, which is the Voices of Change show, and you make a real change because you have had to reinvent yourself since the COVID, and you're still alive. Uh, as everyone can say, <laughs> can see. And so uh, it's been an honor. And um, and, and again, um, tell the people how they can get in touch with you. And then we will end the Voices of Change show for today. So behind me is this picture I took in Venice. That's one of the small canals. I was on right. one of those bridges. That, and then we, we, we liked it. And so we had it enlarged and then stretched. And so... That's a picture of a small canal. And see this white building on, the, on my right there? Yeah. That's actually a five-star restaurant. And, um, and then you see the trees right in the back of it? Yeah. Uh, that's, that's their outside seating area. And that was way before COVID. So they had the idea of people sitting outside. And uh, so, so how, can, how can people reach out to you? They go on globalbusinessnews.net. Yeah net global right. business news dot net that okay. was formed and set up by a friend of mine uh, who worked as a developer at intel corporation in silicon valley and uh it's still there but we have several other subsidiary pages including global radio talk show dot com mm. and also uh global tv talk show Yes, uh, and uh, and and dear listeners of the dear listeners of the Voices of Change show, please uh, get back to Ed if you want to be invited to his show uh, because this is great. It's a great show. It's a it it has thousands of people who listen every day and every second of the day to his show. It's a much bigger show than mine, and I, it's been an honor to have you, Ed. Thank you so much again. And, uh, and talk to you soon. Thank you very much. And we've had, according to Google Analytics, 102,000 audience page views since April 2020. Wow. Amazing. Oh, okay. Thank so, you. Welcome, welcome. Talk to you soon. And come back on Global TV Talk Show. Yes, my, I will. I will. And, and many other people. Thank you okay. so much. Goodbye. Ciao.